right, guys, here we are. Um, I'm going to open the curtains a little bit, get us some natural light going. Maybe. All right, um, wearing a sweater today, very fall-like. What I have here is the supplies you'll need to do the um, mason jar to do, and I'm going to just call this a hostess mason jar, mason jar, or ball jar, or whatever, cur jar, um, a canning jar. And what we're going to do is we're going to make something that you can give as a gift to like if you're going to a nice dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, you know, or just, you know, you're just been invited to an in impromptu birthday party. This is something you can throw together quickly. All right. I've got lace. I've got a, a handmade flower that somebody um, sent to me. Just all sorts of laces, some of trim, some beaded um, pearl trim, various kinds. Those we're not going to need for a while, so I'm just going to push them over. And then I've got liquid gesso, and I've got two colors of paint. I've, I'm using ivory, and it's called flesh. It's a very light tan. Okay. First thing you need to do, oh, and we've also got a variety of um, paint brushes. This one's got a little bit more uh, loose bristles so that you can do stippling like. And then a, a sponge brush. You can use a variety of brushes. So what we're going to do first is wash your jar with hot soapy water, rinse in hot water. This will remove any oils and try to handle the bottle very little um, you know after you get it washed so you're not putting your skin oil on so and what I have here is just a jar of stiffy fabric stiffener and that's just to put this over top I do that so I can turn the jar as I'm painting and get full coverage okay you can paint the top as well it's up to you if you don't want to we're going to cover a lot of it with um, uh, trims and stuff anyway but I'm going to go ahead and paint mine so what I do is I just start painting um, I did not bring a plate back here to put paint on this is going to be interesting let me think on this for just a second I've got a piece You know what? We'll just use this as a palette. It's just a package I threw in the trash. And I'm just going to put out a quantity of gesso. I'm going to double check, make sure we're still filling because my camera sometimes does crazy things. And then just paint the entire, entire jar with your gesso. If you paint the threads where the lid goes on, just know that over time, if they whoever gets your gift, it will wear off from you know being twisted on. And it doesn't matter if you do thick because we're going to just let it dry anyway. So you just want to get a decent coat of gesso all the way around your jar and your lid and then we're going to let it dry and then we'll come back and we will paint it with the lightest no let's do let's put our darker color on first and we'll sponge the light over top that's what we'll do and I am going to go ahead and do I missed a spot there and see by putting it on top of another jar like this you'd never have to touch you never have to touch your jar and mess the paint up I got way too much gesso I might try to put some of this back in my bottle all right so that basically is all you need to do right there um, 
You don't have to paint the inside, only the outside of your jar lid. And I'm just using my fingers to hold it so I can paint around. The gesso will give the paint something to hold on to. Alright, there's that. And of course you get messy, and that's fine. Getting messy is part of the fun. Now, if I was going to make this into a pin cushion, which I'm not going to do in this video, I'll make another jar and I'll just show you the top um, of how to turn it into a pin cushion. That might make an interesting gift for somebody that sews. You could do a pin cushion jar like this and give them a package of pins, some needles, maybe some even just small spools of thread. That would make a wonderful gift for somebody that sews. All right, I'm going to let you guys go. We're going to let this dry, and then I'll be back, okay? We'll be right back. All right, I was going to watch something online while I waited for the paint to dry, but our cable is out. So what I did is I tried to hurry it up with a heat gun. Um, it's still a little bit wet here and there where it's thick but not real bad. So I'm going to press on and we're going to do the uh, flesh color. And I got most of my gesso back in my jar, but I didn't bring the paintbrush back with me. So let's see. I've got another paintbrush here. I'll see if it'll work for this. I'm going to try to put less out this time because that was a lot of gesso. Because we can always put more, right? Okay, so just see it's still it's still not 100% dry. You really want to wait for your gesso to get dry. And it's probably better if you just wait and let it dry naturally. <laughs> but I think we'll still get pretty good coverage. I like that other brush I had. And the gesso might lighten down your um, your base color, but keep in mind we're going to sponge that lighter color cover over, so you probably won't even notice. I've been watching NCIS on uh, Netflix back to back. I started at season one. I think I'm into season two now. It's just one of those that um, Scott doesn't really care for NCIS because he was in the Navy and he sits there and he says things like, um, oh, they'd never do that like that. And I said, well, it's only a TV show. And I know real life is totally different, but it's entertaining and I enjoy it. I love crime dramas. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, I have an associate degree in criminal justice. So, at one time, I was going to be a police officer, but I couldn't get past the whole gun thing. I don't like guns. I don't like them in my house. I don't like... I, I would never touch one. I just... I'm just not into guns. It's just not me. Some people just love their guns and love to shoot and all that. I just don't. So, there went that, that career. But I have the degree. <laughs> It's amazing what you discover about yourself in your early 20s. That's why I always say never get married until you're at least 25. Because you don't even know who you are. You know? You change a lot between 18 and, and uh, about 27. Some lucky few make it through. They marry their high school sweethearts and they make it forever. But... Those are rare, and you have to keep in mind everything you have to work at. So, but you do. You change a lot. Anybody can really attest to that, I think. Between 18 and 27, you change a lot. You figure out who you really are as an adult.
Well, this one's going to end up being very uh, shabby chicish, I think, with all the lace and pearls. i got to keep in mind I don't want to... Yeah, I'm using more paint than I thought I would. Sounds like Greg's awake. He works at nights, my son, and I can hear his video games in there. Surprised he didn't come out and tell me that the cable's out. See, I think I got too much paint now. And I'm probably getting it on too thick, but as I said, where you screw the cap on, it's going to wear back off anyway. So you don't really need to paint, you don't need to paint the bottom part where you screw the lid on. If you don't want to, you don't have to. And it'll probably wear off a little bit on the lid where you grasp it. If you don't cover it in a bunch of lace like I plan to do. I think it's been two years since I made that original ball jar. Um, if I can remember to do it, I will put a link to my original altered uh, canning jar video so you can see what I'm talking about if you hadn't seen it, if you're new. Uh-oh, see now that's showing where my fingers were. People need to slow down out there on the interstate. I can hear them. They're just racing around, and we're fixing to get a lot of rain. Man, they're going fast out there. We used to never hear the highway noise until they put this new neighborhood behind us and chopped down all the trees. We used to never hear a thing back in here. Now we hear everything. All right, so now I've got the base coat. get pretty good coverage all the way around alright I'm gonna let y'all go I'm gonna hit this with a heat gun rinse this brush out and then we'll come back and um, we'll do the coat of the lighter okay we'll be right back okay we're back for the next step I went and filled my coffee up when I did the rinsing of the paint brushes and it's tasty and I wanted to share this I picked this up at Joann's and I thought I would go ahead and light it it's a walnut coffee cake candle and oh my goodness it was a little pricey at six dollars but I think it's going to be worth it um, this wick is way too long never leave the wick real long like this your wick should only be about a quarter to a half inch above the wax so trim it off I learned that when I worked at Cracker Barrel. And when, you, when you're when you going to buy a candle, okay, this is just a side note. All right, it's sitting on the shelf at the store like this, and I see everybody all the time. They open it, and then they smell the candle. You're not getting the full true scent when you do that. Smell the lid. Mmm. Smells like spice cake. I haven't made a spice cake in years. Oh, with a burnt sugar frosting. Mm -mm -mm. Diabetics shouldn't be thinking about that. It's too sweet. So I'm going to set that off to the side so we can enjoy it while we're crafting. Okay? It was like $6 at Joann's. You could use your coupon. All right. Let's move on to the fun stuff. Now we're going to take the ivory paint. Ivory colored paint is my favorite vintage color to go to. I don't know why. I just... I love to use it on anything I want to look a little, you know, vintage. All right, now you can use either a brush that's loose like this. If this is what you have, you can do this, and then you just do like this. We might go over it like this first. And you're not pressing, you're just tapping. And do it randomly. Don't, don't do, um, you know, don't be methodical and go straight up 
and down because you won't get a kind of a mottled look doing it that way. You can do this as little or as much as you want, depending on how much of the base coat you want to show through in the end results. And as I said before, you're not going to see a lot of this lid anyway. And I'm probably getting out of shot, trying to stay in shot. Or of course, I didn't bring any water in here with me. You can use a foam brush. Those you can get sometimes, what, five for a dollar or something. And again with this one, this one being so huge, I wish I could have found a smaller one. I don't want to have necessarily lines all over because it's going to make one big, great big long line. This is much better if you can get a smaller, a smaller sponge brush. Cause see, it's it's making little lines. But if you had a smaller sponge brush, maybe an inch, half inch, it would be better. I'm gonna go back to the brush, the regular paintbrush, cause I like that better. And you want to tap, just keep tapping until you get the coverage that you want. You got to keep in mind it will tip over if you push too hard. <laughs> and I'm just trying to hold it upright with my fingers as it's setting on that bottle of stiff, stiffy stuff that's used to stiffen doilies and, and cheesecloth and things like that. Oh, that's something we could make together. Um, some cheesecloth. Um, Ghost, if anybody's interested in that. Those are fun to make. Oh, that candle smells divine. Absolutely yummy. So if you like a kind of a spicy scented candle, check out Joanne's. They've got them near the, near the checkout. These jar candles. Remember who makes them. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read it for you. I tell you exactly who makes them. Oh, it's so yummy smelling. All right. Now see, I'm going to leave mine just like that, and I have covered I have covered it pretty good. I mean, you you don't see a lot of that tan color, but that's what I wanted. I wanted just a hint of that tan peeking through. And to make it look modeled like that. All right, so we're going to leave this and um, let it get nice and dry. I'll rinse my brushes again, clean up my mess, and um, the next part is the fun part where we're going to take all those laces and trims and um, add them on. I also picked up some feathers. And I've got some nice fall colors in here, um, but I really like these that are kind of a beige color. So we might use a couple of those. And um, I did pick up some other trims at Joann's, but they're, they don't match this project, so we'll save them for another project. But um, I'm going to let you go, and um, I hope everybody's progressing with their jars very well. Um, if I said something that you questioned, please let me know. And I'll try to answer your question. And I'll be back. Okay, I dried it. It's a. It screws. The lid screws on, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could cut a circle of paper to put in there. 
if you wanted to uh, decorate the top that way, you could do that. The paint makes it a little uh, tricky to get the lid on, but it still goes on. What we're going to do now is we're going to layer lace, and you start with your widest lace first, of course, because that wouldn't make sense to go from your skinny lace to the beginning. So just go ahead and wrap the lace around. Overlap just a little bit, not a lot, and it's about right there. Fabric scissors only. Okay. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use E6000, but I'm going to use the hot glue to just tack it in place every once in a while just so the E6000 has time to cure. And because my E6000, once I open it, it starts oozing, I'm going to get a baby wipe to set it on so that cleanup will be easier. I don't know if my glue gun has gotten hot enough. It's getting there. All right. Now, if you really, really struggle with it having to be absolutely even all the way around, feel free to pick a point to measure from. Like if you want to measure from this edge to the where the top would be and do you a pencil line. If you feel the need to do that, you are more than welcome to do that. It's fine. I'm going to lay it on the side. Mine's not perfectly round. It's one of those that's kind of squared out. And I'm just going to try to keep mine at the level of where the measuring points were on the jar. And I really want to start actually on the side over here. You see how it's got like it, it indents back this way? Where those lines are are just slightly below where it starts to turn. So that's how I'm going to keep an eye on where I'm going. And I'm going to start it in the center here. Let's see if we can just put a little bit of hot glue there. And the reason I'm using E6000 is that'll be a more permanent hold for me. And I'm just going to put little dabs at the top and the bottom. I don't like to use this stuff. It stinks. But it's the best selling glue at Michael's. Just an FYI, at least at our store it is. Every week I have to fill all the pegs, plus what's at the register. So that tells you how popular E6000 is. Okay. The only thing is, when you get around to where this is, you know, back toward the bottom, don't lay it on your, on your mat or you'll be in a pickle. Okay. I'm just going to put some hot glue just to hold it. I don't have my little Teflon thing over here. Heather, that was a great idea. I'm glad you shared that that one time. And I'm just putting just a tiny little bit. You don't want to put a lot. You don't want glue oozing out from the lace. I'm just kind of tapping it into it. This thing is used only for glue, so don't freak out if you think I'm using it for food. I'm not. <laughs> so a little bit of hot glue here to pair, paired with the E6000. The hot glue sometimes, you know, it doesn't hold on glass. That's what my worry is. And I just kind of rub that E6000 off. It's probably not the greatest to be getting on your skin, but it cleans up pretty easy. And see, it's just, it's not a lot of glue I'm putting down. It doesn't take a lot to hold lace. Okay. Making sure I'm not sticking down over here on my... It shouldn't stick on this mat, but you never know. Do some hot glue, hot glue. And you should be about even with what you've already done when you get around there. We'll do some E6000. This is the only layer I'm going to do, the E6000, because the hot glue on the next layers 
will hold to the lace from previous. Does it, I hope that makes sense to y'all. I mainly want to just make sure it's going to stay on this bottle for me forever. <laughs> okay, a little hot glue there, there, maybe a little in the middle. And then I'm going to E6000 just a couple little bubbles. And I'll catch down with my Teflon thing. And that's your first layer of lace. E6000 is as bad as glue strings. Okay, I'm just going to set that aside now. And as Laura says, we can clean those glue strands up in a little bit. And we got a baby wipe here. I can clean the E6000 and maybe some of the paint off my hands. And I'll bring the jar up closer so y'all can see it. Don't look at my nails. I was goofing around and I did purple with blue sparkles over top. And then I went to work and you can see what work does to my fingernails. That's why I don't bother with keeping my nails pretty. It's all chipped up. But All right. I think I can pick it up without messing it up. All right. And this is what the lace is looking like so far. You can see a little bit of the glue shining through there. That's the E6000. All right. Now we just need to play. I mean, basically you're going to layer lace and trims on until you're happy. And what I do is I do the widest and then I look at my laces and see what I have next. See that one's about that wide. And then I've got this roughly one. And there's the flower and I've got, oops, my candle's sitting on that one. And I got this one. This is the one I want to do on the cap though, I think. This one's going to be the one for the cap. It might hold just with the, the glue gun. And I'm not real worried about where the the two ends meet on the cap because you know every time you open and close it it's going to end up in a different spot anyway so I'm going to go ahead and glue this on here keep the edge of the lace even with the top of the jar the top of the lid I'm wondering now when I'll be able to upload this because our cable is out. I think I already told you all that. It has not come back on yet. So we're going to go around here. And then I'm going to have to just pause you for just a second because I remembered something I got to run and do in the other room. But I'll only be gone a second. But I'm not going to make you all wait on me to get back. There we go. Alright. So there's the, what the lid looks like. Alright. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Greg had already turned it off for me. I'm notorious for leaving things on, which is probably not a good thing. All right, and I've got these two pretty ones. This one's kind of roughly, so I'm going to do this flat one first. And I'm doing all different shades of cream on here. I think I want to leave the pattern on the very bottom of this lace kind of open, so I'm going to lay this one right above where that I'm going to lay this one right here right above where this trim has got a decoration to it and I kind of want my seams on the same side so we'll cover the seam on the bottom here in just a minute
And I'm just going to do the, the glue toward the center of this piece of lace and not do it, you know, all over because the holes are kind of big on either side of the main design. Now things you could put in this, you could just put some like after dinner mints in it. You know those pretty ones that are in the their pastel like pillows? Those were my grandmother's favorite candy. The dinner mints. You could do um you could do Andy's mints if you wanted to. You know, just get a box of chocolates and then fill this up with some of them. Or if they're diabetic, you could get sugar free candy. Or tea bags, if they're a tea drinker. Get different flavors. Try to choose some that they've maybe never tried before. Or go to a store like World Market. We have a place called World Market here. And um, you can get teas from all around the world. I'm just trimming that down just a little bit. I don't want it to overlap that far. All right. Okay, so there's that one. Now, I've got all the pearl trims. I've got, let's see, I've got this fancy lace here that we could go below this one or along the bottom of it. But this one's got like a ribbon in it, and I really kind of like the one that's already got the ribbon in it. Do it along there. I think I'll do that. And I'm only going to attach it where the ribbon is. So if we put a little glob right here to get it started. Check and see if I'm on the frame. I am. Kind of, sort of. I'm just going to run this around and trim it down so I'm not like on, on a leash here. beauty of the ribbon being in there is I'm not burning my hands either. <laughs> but it is looking like I'm going to be running out of glue in the next few minutes here. Yeah, we need to put another glue stick in. Hmm. There they are. I really love this glue gun. I wish I'd picked up a couple of them when they were on clearance at Joann's. I think I paid three dollars for this or four dollars. It wasn't much. That's one of the sure bonders. That's where I went yesterday was Joann's because I needed a new um, cutter because the cutter I had, the numbers wore off was a Recollections brand, and the, the numbers all wore off so quickly. I was shocked. Okay, I don't want this to overlap that far before I put glue down there. I'm going to end up with a trimmed bit here, but that's okay. Okay. Uh-oh. That'll hold it in place. Now where I have the ribbon overlapping, that's where we'll put that great big flower. And nobody will ever see where you've got the overlaps. It'll look like it's just magically attached. Okay, so here's, here's this jar so far. Um, I'm going to apologize for the lighting because we are, you know, nearing that storm's entry to dumping 17 inches of rain on us in the next two or three days, so... All right, now to tie the lid into the bottom, I'm going to put some of this 
just underneath the scalloped edge of the first lace we put on there. Hopefully I'll have enough. Let's see. I know I had more. What did I do with it? Uh-oh. Maybe I didn't have them anymore. thought I had a bunch of that. There it is. Boy. I don't have a bunch. I probably have enough to finish this. Let's see. I got stuff sticking to me now. Yeah, I think I'm going to go right there. Don't be afraid to, to uh, layer things up on your projects. I know you can go too far, but, you know, whose definition of too far are you going to believe? Yours or somebody else's? It's your project. If you like it, there'll be at least three or four other people that like it, too. So, we'll say three. Three out of five would like it. <laughs> Sounds like pretty good odds to me. Oh, train's really hauling it. Get through that connection, through that section down there. Really laying on the horns. They probably want to get all those trains away from the coast and up on higher ground too, I would think. Got some friends in Maine have been posting some wild pictures of like parking lots with the pavements lifted and things like that. I worry that's what we're to expect. It's just so much craziness between people acting violent and this weather. I just don't know what to think. I mean, we as a human race got to start treating each other better. This is crazy. The local college, not um, the facility that Greg attends, but the one that's closer to the house had to evacuate two buildings today because of a bomb threat. And then last night, there was a shootout over drugs in the county that where I live. So I'm just, oh, you just don't know what you're going to see on the, sh on the news. And you know what's really, really bad? Is Scott and I have determined that the best news that we can get about what's happening near us comes out of the BBC. Isn't that horrible? Everybody wants to believe everything on Fox News. But real news, you have to go across the water to get the real news. It's crazy. All right, All right so I'm going to let this set like this for just a second. That's a side ad to your video. Sorry about that. Greg just wanted to talk to me. All right, so... We've got the laces on, and that's all I'm going to do to that part of it, okay? I went and I got some ribbon. I'm trying to decide, do I want to just make a bow? All right, we'll make a bow. What I do is I have a short, this will be the one of the tails, and leave a little bit hanging. I drop a loop like this, hold it like that. Then I grab this one and I pull it from the bottom and over the top and then I push this through here, grab it with this fingers, and that's twisted on me, I don't want that. And what you do is you just keep working it. hear my neighbor talking. All right. So that's how I would make a bow or how I make a bow. I don't really like organza ribbon. I like a satin ribbon, but I don't have any this wide. All right. I think he's talking to his sister. If they're talking in person or if he's on the phone. It's awful loud to be on the phone, but that's all right. All right. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to leave that like that. I'm going to trim these with these. And what you can do to keep it from fraying is just go like that. Don't catch it on fire. <laughs> you just want to seal the edges, and that does it. All right, so we've got this pretty bow here. And I've got the pretty flower. The flower's a lot bigger than I thought it was. That's okay. All right. We might have to go for a smaller flower. And I thought I had one sitting here, but I guess I don't. Um, you could also put the flower on top if you wanted to. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just trim a little bit So we've got that and we've got the bow but I remembered I also have the beaded trim so I think I want to use some of that and this is the the trim I bought from saw crafters I'm just gonna go along the top of here at the very top of the the lace like this and I think I'm gonna put some on the jar lid as well like that okay so we'll do that real quick I'm sorry if this video is turning out to be longer than you expected. But it's just fun to craft together, I think. And I don't know about y'all, but I like to see how people do things. Basically, it, whatever you do to the cap, you need to try to do toward the midsection to kind of tie them together, if that makes sense to y'all. And I know lacy, frou-frou things aren't everybody's cup of tea, but you could do this with bright, happy trims, too, and just use bright, happy paint colors, you know? Shoot, this might turn into somebody's like mad money jar or something like that. It'd be fun to give a teenager a gift of money inside this for like a, a holiday as well. You know what? I cut that one pearl too short. And that will irk me. So, we will cut one pearl off here and carefully put it on there. Try not to burn myself. That's the kind of thing that just would drive me nuts. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So we need a link to go around again. Basically, I just want to go... And I'm going to cut it a little bit longer this time. Because, you know, you can always trim a couple off if you need to. Love this trim. keep thinking I need to order some more. have to try going to Saw's website um, on a different browser because it doesn't like Chrome for some reason. Neither does Diamond Dyes. I have to go on Firefox 
I'm not sure what's going on there, but it's okay. I can still order stuff. It doesn't slow me down. It should, though. It really should. I really need to quit spending so much money, but crafting is just such a stress reliever and a joy maker for me. I just can't imagine not crafting and buying occasional goodies to play with. But I have taken a break before. I went a whole year just about with no purchases at all, so... I don't go too far because I'm I don't move fast enough and the glue you know turns back hard before I can get whatever I'm gluing down to, down on it okay I need to trim two off last time I had to add one back that's all right those won't go to waste I'll use them on something So see, we just keep adding layers of goodness to it, and it'll be really pretty when we're done. Okay, now, I've also got, there's a piece of this already, this, this is that um, teardrop trim from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to add it. Down here. Along the bottom. And I know you're probably thinking, is she ever going to stop adding stuff? But believe me, it really looks pretty when you get all done. It really does. This one might turn into a Christmas gift for someone. Woohoo! Christmas presents. That'd be cool. Start on those now. Christmas presents, you got holiday dinners coming up, just so many things that would be a perfect opportunity to use this as a gift. Just saying. And if you don't have a canning jar, don't go buy one. Just wash out like a pickle jar really, really good or a jelly jar. Jelly jar might be better because sometimes you know. Pickles are pretty noxious. It's hard to get the that vinegar pickle smell out. Jelly wouldn't be too bad because I don't know. I don't mind smelling fruit. It seems a lot of people enjoyed my little got on my soapbox yesterday about treating each other with kindness and sharing and caring and loving. I'm, I'm really glad that there are some people with everything that's been going on. I'm really glad to see some people feel that same way. I've got glue on my skin. And it's sticking really good to the nail polish. Okay, and me. Let's see, we need to trim this a little bit here. I'm going to trim it right before that little drop there. Ouch, ouch, ouch! Now, I need to do some thinking. I'm going to leave you all on here to think with me. You can shout out, you can shout out um, ideas if you want to. I've also got two different sizes of um, just regular pearl trim. And what I like to do with this, 
I think I'm going to go with a little bit larger one of it. I like to just make loops and let them hang. Or sometimes just little sections of it. Let's just do little sections of it. Let's chop a couple sections. Let's chop five pieces. Nice uneven number. That's four, five. I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one over here. Remember that flower is huge, okay? So you want anything you're going to have like as a dangle or a little part that just sticks out. It needs to be kind of near the edge of where that flower is or you're never going to see it. Is the best way for this to go. Let's put a big old glob of glue in here. Like so. Plop this down. Just want to give it a chance to grab a hold. And see you got the little bits that kind of stick out from the sides and down. I just like how that looks. Right, and then I've got this bow. I'm just playing right now, guys. I'm trying to figure out where I want that to be. Or if I want to use it at all. I had some other trim out to use, but I decided against it. Sometimes less is more, and I keep telling myself, less is more, less is more. No, we're not going to use it. And I think what I'm going to do on these... You can clean up your glue bits and stuff a little bit if you want to, but this is the finished one. We're going to call this one finished. And um, if you make round sachets to go down inside, you can use your lid as your pattern. And we'll do that in another video. And I'll show you how to, sorry, how to make a pin cushion out of the top. Okay. So there you go. That's the mason jar project. I hope that was um, fun for y'all. And I'll get back with you on the next one. Don't know when I'll get this up because, like I said, the cable is out. So talk to you later. Bye. Leave a comment. Okay, I'm back. I forgot the feathers. So I added the feathers. And I really like how that looks. They look like leaves. I think it adds a lot to it. So I hope y'all like this project. Oh, and I trimmed this one and made an uh, made the long one into two shorter ones. So here's the jar one last time. Sorry, I forgot the feathers, guys. But I think they really add a lot. Let me know what you think. Bye now.